Um, so at what point did you realise, uh, or and I'm talking about from the, your, your, your child, so when you were a child, um, because there were, there were claims that your mother was worried for you that you had sort of mental health issues. Um, you mean in this life? Yeah. Yeah, because I've been my both mothers in my first century life and this life claimed that I had mental health issues. Um, so my first century ma mother Mary claimed that I had mental health issues quite frequently, <laughs> and often she claimed that to protect me. She felt from people attacking me and feeling up killing me. In this life, uh, my mother um, felt initially when I claimed that I was Jesus that I might have some mental health problem, and she decided to go without my knowledge and visit a psychologist uh, and of course he believed that I had some mental health problems and so he then reported me to some authorities and then of course they reported me to my own doctor <laughs> eventually. So nine months later I found out that my mother was concerned that I had some mental health problems in claiming that I was Jesus. So that was nine months after she done all of that. So she was still talking to me and everything, but she didn't disclose to me that that she was worried for me. Of course, I went along to the doctor and had a chat with him, and he was pretty much fine after I had a chat with him. And uh, and of course, my mother, by the nine month time, felt that I didn't have any mental health problems, and she was quite regretful that she'd started the entire process. The entire process resulted in me not being able to receive insurance, uh, which was quite harmful to my business at the time because I was developing property. And so uh, her choice to do that quite severely harmed my business at the time, and, and, and therefore even her grandchildren. <laughs> And so she, um, yeah. So she, she regretted her decision after that. Yeah. Um, when, uh, when did you actually start having memories of your first century life? Uh, probably as early as two years of age in this life, but I didn't attribute them psychologically to a, to anything. So they just confused me. They were quite sometimes quite extreme memories, what, you know, memories of torture and abuse and so forth. Um, and as a result of those memories, I would often, I learnt, uh, I, until I, up until I was around uh, 15 years of age, I learnt, by the time I was 15, I learnt to, to slot them away, to compartmentalise them. So... Yeah, okay. So... That came in... Round about by the time I was 15. Yeah. So by the time I was 15 years of age, I'd learned how to compartmentalise my memories. And what I did with my memories then is I still generally had them, but uh, all I did was put them in like a too hard bin, basically. And uh, I never, and I basically decided to not deal with the too hard bin for the rest of my life at that point, pretty much. But by the time I hit 33 years of age, I found it very, very difficult to, for them to remain in the too hard bin. And I went through quite a lot of distressing period in that part of my life. That's when I left my ex-wife and, uh, and I left the religious faith. And so there were a lot of upheaval in my life. My family wouldn't speak to me. My friends didn't speak to me. My children wouldn't spend time with me because they were taught by the religion that I was now a bad person and could not be spent any time with. And as a result of that, I went through a very you know, difficult period of my life. And, um, and of course, during that period of my life, uh, all of these memories started to resurface, ironically, at a very similar age to my death in the first century. And so there were memories of my death in, you know, during that period of time as well. So it was all quite difficult to address and, and, and cope with. And I still try. I still managed to suppress it down again. <laughs> and when I was around 33, I managed to get it all under control again. By the time I was about 34, and then from 34 to 40, so six-year period, I pretty much had the memories under complete control again. I, I didn't uh, try to, you know, remember them at all. I spent most of my time trying to deny them. I developed a business up again. Um, 
I had four companies running by the end of that period of time. I was working as a computer systems engineer. I ran my own computer consultancy business. I also was working as a developer, a property developer. And uh, by that stage, by, by 40 years of age, I thought I was pretty good. I, I, I hadn't uh, sorted out my personal life in the sense I was not in a permanent relationship but I, or any real relationship at that point. But I had a significant amount of income and I had my own sports car and I had at that stage 13 homes that I owned and uh, along with the subsequent debt <laughs> and uh, I thought I was getting my life under pretty good control actually. Yeah. So, And that's when I started having most of my memories hit me very rapidly and so that was very difficult <laughs> again because uh, 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 and I actually went through a period where I gave up trying to control the memories rather than, and, and put them back under wraps. And so during that period I decided, well, I've got to resolve this problem. It's now come up quite a number of times. It's come up all through my childhood. It came up when I was 33 and it's come up again when I was 40. So I decided instead, this time, instead of trying to put it back under wraps again and keep it all under control, I decided to make a, a choice to go ahead with uh, reorganizing my life so I could have time processing these memories and working my way through them emotionally so that I could get rid of them that way. And so I sold my business at that time and uh, sold most of my property and then spent most of my time alone uh, trying to work my way through the memories and what they all meant. And as a result, I had a lot more memories and, and it became very clear what they meant. It meant that I had the 2,000 years of life that I had memories about and, uh, and it also became very clear to me you know, that my real identity was Jesus and not Alan John Miller. And Alan John Miller was just a 50-year experience of a 2,000-year life. And, uh, but that took me another three years of processing through lots and lots of memories very, from a very emotional perspective working way through a lot of fear, uh, a lot of worry uh, about other people's opinions, working away through a lot of grief. And eventually um, I sorted out a lot of those particular things and now I don't have a lot of grief um, that I go through now. But I'm still having memories now, so I still go through more memories each, pretty much each day. I, I have more memories about my life. 